If you've ever played a Quake Engine game online, such as Quake 3, Counter-Strike or Half-Life, you'll have noticed people continuously jumping whilst moving around the map. This is a technique known as strafe jumping, sometimes called bunny hopping, which allows players to move around more quickly. This can give a strategic advantage and can also allow the player to reach places that are otherwise inaccessible. In this video we'll be talking about what strafe jumping is, taking a look at the maths behind it and finding out why it is such a difficult skill to master. Note that while this video focuses on Quake 3, the same general principles apply to other Quake and Quake Engine derived games. Strafe jumping is performed by continuously jumping whilst moving the mouse and pressing direction keys in a particular way. Here I'm showing the most common method which is to alternate between moving the mouse to the left whilst holding forward and strafe left, and moving the mouse to the right while holding forward and strafe right. But why does this cause the player to go faster? The key is in the Quake 3 physics code, in particular the accelerate function which tells the game how to update a player's velocity vector in response to the player's mouse and keyboard inputs. This function is called on every frame, and as long as the player is airborne, and isn't about to collide with a wall or undergo some other impulse, it entirely determines the player's velocity along the ground plane from frame to frame. The main two inputs are the player's current velocity vel, shown on the diagram by the green arrow, and the user's intended direction wishder, shown on the diagram by the blue arrow. Wishder is the direction the player intends to travel and is a combination of the player's view angle and arrow keys. Notice how when the player presses and releases arrow keys, Wishder changes direction relative to the view angle. The return value of the function is the player's velocity for the next frame. The first line of the accelerate function assigns a scalar current speed as the dot product of vel with Wishder. Geometrically, you can construct current speed by drawing a line from the tip of vel, which joins the line of Wishder at a right angle. This is shown on a diagram as the grey line. Current speed is then the distance from this right angle to the centre of the player. Note current speed is inaccurately named and is different from the actual speed which would simply be the length of vel. Next, add speed is taken to be the difference between the nominal running speed, 320, subtracted from current speed. Note that although in the code wishder is a unit vector, I've shown it on the diagram with length 320. Add speed then corresponds with the distance from the tip of the blue arrow to the grey line. On the third line, add speed is clipped to be between a maximum acceleration value and zero. Finally, add speed is multiplied by the wishder and added to the input velocity. By varying wishder, you can see that add speed can always be made positive whilst keeping wishder pointing less than 90 degrees away from vel. As such, a speed increase is always possible to obtain by manipulating wishder into such a region. Let's have a closer look at how this function behaves. Here is a plot which shows the acceleration yielded for different inputs. The x-axis shows the angle between vel and wishder, and the y-axis shows the input speed, i.e. the length of vel. The colour shows the acceleration that accelerate gives for these parameters. Notice the large dead zone in the centre. This corresponds with the places that add speed is clipped to zero. When changing from a left curving strafe jump to a right curving strafe jump, this dead zone must be crossed as quickly as possible in order to maximise speed gains which is the reason that players alternate between pressing forward and left and forward and right, because doing so instantly changes the wishder by 90 degrees. Blue regions are areas where the mouse is moved too far and the wishder points backwards, slowing down the player. For any speed above around 400 units per second, the optimal point is just slightly outside of the dead zone. Moving either side of the optimal point causes acceleration to fall off sharply. Because this optimal point has such a sharp fall off, combined with the fact that it's constantly moving makes strafe jumping a very difficult skill to master. Being just a few degrees from the optimal angle and you'll be accelerating significantly slower than you could be. Once you've found this sweet spot, you quickly have to find it again on the other side when you change direction in order to maintain a straight line. I hope you found this video interesting and that it gave you some insight into this weird quirk of first person shooter history. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments below.